Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a cheat at GP Las Vegas at the Old School Championship. I'm going to lay out the facts for you in the beginning and then tell you my opinion. So the person in question, Brian Weissman, who won the event, he is a very well-known magic dealer and magic personality. And until this point, nothing bad was ever said about him. Uh, he has a lot of very valuable magic cards. So what happened was he submitted a deck and the deck looks different from the deck list. Part of this is on Channel Fireball. Channel Fireball does not require a deck list for the old school magic tournament. It is a official event. So it's not like a group of people just got together. There are tickets involved. There is a payout involved. It's not super casual, but it's as casual as you can get for a official Channel Fireball Magic Fest GP event. So Athena, married to Ephro, was playing him, took a picture of his deck, and unfortunately, there are two circle of protection reds, as you can see on his left hand. That is fascinating because his deck list for Channel Fireball that after he won, uh, must have been taken before, had only one circle of protection red. Guess what type of deck Athena was playing? Guess what kind of deck a lot of people are playing? Red deck wins. So his explanation is he used the same 75 for the attorney and had him photograph my testing list, which is what I wanted public. There is no rule requiring you to have the same list photographed and we didn't register decks or anything. Put your pitchforks away, says Brian. And this is quite fascinating um, It because... He's eking out every advantage, right? So he's saying that the photographer is coming to take photos of our deck, which makes sense, which could, many people could consider that the deck list. And I'm going to give them the, for a competitive advantage, I'm going to give them the wrong deck. And then when I win the event, they're going to post the wrong deck on Channel Fireball. I haven't really seen anything to this level. Um, it's hard to... So those are the facts. That's what happened. People and judges are looking into it. Uh, there was a, a judge for this event, um, a Star City Games judge for this... Sorry, Channel Fireball judge for this event. And he didn't catch it, but now he knows of it and he's investigating. And there was prizes. You People did pay money to for the prize pool. So it's not a victimless crime like a lot of people will say. The victims is everyone who paid money. They were scammed because they can never win. Cheating at any level is despicable. Now, is it cheating? Is it you know inking that 0.5% advantage? That's up for you to decide. Now I'm going to focus um, a lot more and show you. Here's Jess Epstein. Uh, just Epstein says that it is cheating. And when you have these uh, Efro, um Afina's wife, or well, Afina, Efro's wife, you have Jess, you have Weds. We're going to see a Weds tweet. You have people kind of jump in. Uh, that's when it's over. That's when it's done. The investigation has ended. And the, the last thing you want to tell people is put away your pitchforks. That is the last thing you want to tell them to do if that's your true objective. I just find it funny. This is not even a, um, maybe it's a real format, but I'm going to down. It's not even a real format, in my opinion. And it's a casual event, and there's cheating. Uh, there was cheating back in the days of Mike Long. And I like the f discussion because it's an interesting discussion since the days of old Magic School players, I don't know any of them that didn't cheat. Mike Long, Mark Justice were one and two. And they cheated into... The problem is very simple. 
if somebody cheats and you don't cheat and cheating is allowed, they're going to beat you. So if you're a baseball batter, let's say Barry Bonds, and you take uh, PEDs to make yourself a better player or a stronger player, then you're going to get the major contract. You're going to hit all the home runs. And if I, as you know, Ken Griffey Jr., do not take PEDs, I'm never going to hit as many home runs as you, even though I'm better. I'm better. I train harder. I put in more work. You're just taking PEDs. The same with magic cheating. No matter how much training, no matter how creative my deck design and how perfectly mechanically I play, just ask all the Magic Online players who do so bad in the Pro Tour, but mechanically, there's nothing wrong with them. They understand the mechanics much better than Aaron Barberitz, who, you know, I, I made a video on that where the, she doesn't understand the mechanics of Magic. It's very simple. She either cheated or did not understand the mechanics of Magic to the extent that someone in Magic Online or in Magic Arena would understand it. Cheating is pretty bad. Um, is this cheating? I'll let you guys decide it. I'm kind of on the edge. It's definitely manipulation of some type in which Brian admits that the deck that was that he submitted before, um, and it definitely benefited him. So I think the whole cheating argument is very trite. Uh, it doesn't make as much sense to me today. Because cheating is intent. And how do you know the intent of some person? How do you know Yuya Watanabe's intent? How do you know Aaron's intent? How do you know uh, Paula de Damar de Rosa's intent? Really hard. And what if I got caught cheating, it would be the end of me, right? Or if you got caught cheating, it would be the end of you. But if Paula Damar de Rosa got caught cheating, everyone's going to sing his praises and say how awesome he is. And that's why intent is so dangerous in this scenario. Your intent to cheat, I don't think should matter. The question is, did you gain a benefit from something that was a mistake or something that was caused by you? So here's, the, I mean, it's interesting, right? A deck list, a photo is taken of your deck. And you must, at this point, understand that they're doing this photo for a deck list, right? A deck list check. It's a little easier. And then the eventual deck is different from the deck list of the winner. And the person who just won is a famous Magic player or famous Magic dealer. Uh, here's Weds. You know, Weds would say um, he... Uh, whatever he won should be confiscated immediately. Just happened to have a second COP against a red player, and he's showing 15 cards in the sideboard with a single COP red. Bring the old school cheating back to the old school magic. That's my favorite comment. I think that's great because if you play magic during the, the, the Odin days of magic, you're going to come to the quick realization that, yeah, the only way I can win is if I cheat. So... If you don't cheat, you don't become famous in Magic, you're not going to get the article sponsorships, you're not going to get all of this stuff because you're not a winner. If you do cheat, even if people knew you cheated, you're still a winner. right? You, you, they can't take away your trophies, they can't take away the articles about you winning the tournament, they can't take away your deck list, your, they, they cannot. You know, Anywhere from Andrew Yanyuk, who's a, he's a ten, he's worth tens of millions, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars. He cheated in Magic, and he admitted so. And I, I grant him, I'm glad that he at least said that he did, which is something that Alex Pacini never really did. He just said that it was a mistake. and It's hard for me to imagine winning a game of Magic at a Magic Fest without cheating. Like Even for me, like if, I, if you had to tell me my life depends on winning Magic Fest, my reaction is not going to be, oh my gosh, I should spend every hour, every second um, learning how decks work and percentages and all. No, no, my 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 thing is watching like a magician, you know, watching um, some magician. I watch the mask magician. He's pretty good. And learning all the card tricks I can, like hiding cards in my sleeve. And you know, like that's that would be my strategy going in if my life depended on it. I'd be like, okay, so there's no way 
I can be a cheater. I just have to be a better cheater. I mean, imagine the, the problem here is very simple. These are like very unprofessional magicians, right? What if like a real magician was playing magic? Like, and they knew like, have you seen some of these people on YouTube? And even you like slow frame it and you can't really see it. It's very, very unnoticeable. Very smooth. People always tell me, oh, shuffle the deck, shuffle. Guys, you do realize one of the major cheats is when your opponent cracks a fetch land and you manipulate their deck. They can't cut their own deck. Right? So you're shuffling their deck and then you hand it back to them. They don't reshuffle their deck, right? That would make no sense. They crack the fetch land. So you can manipulate the top of their deck by looking at the bottom card. If it's a land and they're mana flooded, or then they put the land to the top and they fake shuffle and then hand that back the deck to them. Sometimes you cut, sometimes you don't cut. There's so many different ways to cheat. And there's, you know, the card in the sleeve, the extra Hornet Queen in the sideboard. There's cards in lap still, which is the oldest cheat in the history of magic. Cards in lap <laughs> still works every time though, apparently. I just think as long as magic has prizes, there will be people caught for cheating. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is a cheat or do you think this is competitive advantage? Bye guys.